Hello everyone, my name is Andrew. I am an instructor for AngularBootCamp.com and a software developer at Oasis Digital. Uh, today I'm going to um, actually do a multi-part series um, based on a talk that I did at the Angular Meetup in St. Louis. I'm going to talk about Angular Reactive Forms. Um, so first of all, I will start off with a demo of a reactive form with async validation. And then I'll compare template forms and reactive forms. And then there'll be three different uh, videos after this. Uh, so these will be separate videos. Um, the first one, how to create a great reactive form. Second one is how to add reactivity with observables in RxJS. And finally, uh, I'll go into an approach to do state management with reactive forms. And this is something that we've found works really well um, that isn't immediately obvious that you can do with reactive forms. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is show this demo application that I've made with Angular Reactive Forms. It's a very simple fake domain registrar. So the idea is if you know, a user would enter their name and the desired domain name, and they would be able to add that to cart to purchase. Um, the two inputs have validators on them. And I also have an async validator on the domain name that will actually check to see if that domain uh, can be reached with an HTTP request. So the first thing I need to do to use this app is to start the backend. I have a very simple uh, node backend server. This is in Express. And uh, it's just a single JavaScript file that starts a, an Express server and has a single endpoint that I can hit and pass the domain name to it. And then it will try to actually, um, it will try to actually reach that domain name um, and return whether or not it was able to reach it. And the reason why I need to do this is because of cores. So cores prevent, it's a, a security feature in modern browsers that prevents uh, websites from making arbitrary requests to different uh, servers. So um, websites can uh, reach servers on different origins. So origin is the domain, is the, uh, oh, an origin would be uh, like this. So it's the, uh, um, it's uh, essentially without the path. So it includes the protocol and the um, port number as well. So um, it, you have to basically start your server um, in a, such a way that returns the right headers to the browser, so HTTP headers, to tell the front end that it's able to um, send uh, cross-origin requests to the server. So in Express, this is really easy to do with the cores package. You just bring that in, and then you um, add it as an, a middleware to the Express server. Uh, and that allows the front end to reach a different origin. So in this case, it's going to hit localhost, uh, port 8080 to do the validation for the domain name. And so I have cloned the uh, repository, and so I need to do an npm install. This, of course, installs our node modules. And then I can do an npm start. All right, so my server is running on port 8080. And if I come over to my running application, I should be able to enter my name and try to register a domain name. And so it uh, gave me a uh, console message that I've defined in my Angular code. It's just saying that it's um, reaching out to the backend to see if this URL exists. And we can see that the backend came back and said that the domain is taken, of course. Um, so if I type in some arbitrary website, it does a request and it doesn't get a response. Uh, so it knows that the domain is available. Um, and my add to cart button doesn't do anything. This is just a demo application. Um, I also have validation on the name. So if I don't enter anything, it tells me to enter my name. And this is an Angular Material application. So I'm using Material for the look and feel. And so I'm using that to make the inputs look this way. And I'm using a mat error to have this error message appear uh, whenever the validation errors on the name field. 
Um, I think I also have one on the domain name. Um, it's checking to see if the domain name is valid uh, before it sends it to the back end. So this is another asynchronous validator. And I'm using, again, a match error um, element in the HTML to do this. So if I just type in like a random string, but I don't have a um, I don't have like a .com or .net or something. It knows that it's an invalid domain name. All right. So let's go ahead and look at the code for this. Um, this is on StackBlitz, so you can go ahead and look at this right in your browser. Um, I need to refresh this first. Um, and so. What I have here is um, just a single component Angular application. Uh, so as I mentioned, you need to make sure that you have the backend running. Um, and so this single component um, defines the, uh, the HTML elements that we use. So for reactive forms, I'm using a form element, and I'm binding in the form group. Um, then I have. Uh, an input for the name, and so since I'm using Angular Material, there are special Angular Material components that you use. So I'm using the mat form field to wrap the inputs. This is Angular Material specific. And then I have my error component to show that error message whenever the validation on this input uh, has a validation error. And uh, I'm binding this input to the form group using form control name. And so there is a form control inside this group with this name uh, underneath the key name. And then for the second input, I have another form field, which is again required by material. And um, I am using this to rename, uh, to essentially get a variable whose name is control. So this is a way with uh, Angular templates uh, to um, essentially declare a template variable name uh, and have it be equivalent to some code. So in this case, it will just run this group.get domain one time, and it'll name that control. And then this element will appear if control is truthy, which it always is because we have a domain control in the group. So now I have the control available under the, under, under the name control, and so I'm able to bind it to the input with the form control directive. Um, so this is just another input, just like the first one. Mat input is a directive from Angular Material. And so then I have a series of hints and errors that show if different conditions are met. So the first one, if the control is valid, so if it passes validation, then we know that the domain is available. And so we give a little hint message. Uh, we saw that earlier. There's also a hint for when the domain is taken. Um, and this is shown if the control has the error domain exists. Uh, so we'll see how that's done in a moment in the TypeScript side. And then I also have a mat error for if the domain name is invalid. So I showed that when I typed in the string without a .com or .net and so on. And finally, I have a mat error for if there is a network error, so this is if it can't reach the back end for some reason, um, and it'll show that message instead. Uh, so each one of these validation errors are uh, defined in the validators that I've created, so we'll see that in a second. Uh, but in the template here, the last thing I have is a button that is disabled whenever the group is not valid. All right, so in the TypeScript, um, I have my component class. Um, I have a form group, which holds all of the controls, the two text controls. Um, and then I also have some uh, housekeeping. So this is just to show debug information if I want. <clears throat> so if I come in the template and I uncomment this, then I should see some debug information on the screen. So as I type in my name, I can see that being reflected in the value of the form group. So this is the form group's value. Uh, so this object is the object that you get from group.value. And likewise, if I enter a domain, 
google.com uh, that is reflected. And this is all happening um, reactively, so the reactive form is instantly updating its state based on um, the state of the inputs as the user types. You don't have to like hit a button to copy state over or something. Uh, we can see that there's an invalid. Um, uh, we're looking at the invalid property of the form group. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is that with async validators, invalid and valid don't necessarily mean the same thing. So valid means that um, uh, valid means that all of the controls in the form group are valid, and invalid means that at least one of them has the state invalid. And what this means is that with an async validator, you don't get your validation returned immediately. It happens at some time in the future because it's async. And so what happens is that your form isn't valid because there's one control that's still pending, and none of the controls are invalid either. So invalid and valid are both false in that case. So if you really want to make sure that your form is valid before the user does something, for example, you want to make your button um, enabled whenever the form is definitely valid, you want to assign it the opposite of valid rather than using the invalid property if you have async validators like we do here. And so that is the reason why I'm doing this rather than uh, doing group.invalid. So it's like a subtle bug that you might not even notice when you're writing your apps because um, your async validators might be returning so quickly you're running everything on the local dev machine. Uh, but this definitely has a difference in production. Um, so this is uh, what the debug property is for in my code. Um, this debug info subject. I'm just uh, using a subject so I can do things with RxJS. I also have an unsubscribe subject, and this is just for good housekeeping. You want to make sure to end your subscriptions when your component is destroyed. And so I'm doing that with a subject here. And so I set everything up in my constructor, since this is where I have my injected services. So I have a form builder service that's coming from the um, Angular Forms API. And then I have my HTTP client coming from the HTTP client API built into Angular. So these are both uh, built-in parts of Angular that I'm bringing in. Uh, and form builder is part of Angular Forms. And so once I have them, I can create my form group. So here I have, um, I'm using the form builder's group method to create the form group where each control is defined in metadata. So I have a uh, key, which is the name of the controls, and then information about the control. So the first one is the initial value. And then I have my uh, synchronous validators first. So these are both synchronous validators. And then finally, the third element of this array should be your async validators. In this case, I have one for the domain name. And I'm doing this bind this so that the uh, method, which is invoked as a function, still has the same this context. And once I do that, um, I also have this uh, RxJS code set up. This is just for the debug info. And I won't go into details with this, uh, but essentially it's updating that subject whenever the, any of the values, uh, whenever the value changes. And it's also starting with the initial value of the group. And so on destroy, I unsubscribe from my, uh, I, I end my subscriptions by emitting a, a value on the unsubscribe subject, and I also complete the subject. And this is a design pattern essentially for uh, unsubscribing automatically whenever your component is destroyed, since we're doing that in the on destroy uh, lifecycle hook. And so these are my two validators that I've defined. Um, the first is a synchronous validator. This one is checking to see if the domain has the right um, format uh, before it sends it to the back end. This is a regular expression that I found somewhere on the web to, do, uh, to check if a string is a valid domain. I am sure that there are corner cases that this does not match. Uh, but for the purposes of our demo, this is more than sufficient. So I'm taking this regex and I'm using it to test the value of the control. 
And if I get a truthy subject or a truthy result, uh, then I return null. And null with validators in Angular means that there wasn't a validation error. And if I return object, that means there was. And I can give some information about the validation error with key value pair. So here my key is the type of the error, and I'm just returning true for that. And so then I also have an async validator. And this has the same return type as synchronous validators, except uh, they are wrapped in an observable. And that allows us to emit at some time in the future rather than synchronously. Uh, so here um, I'm starting off with a, uh, an observable that has a single item, a single value that it emits of undefined, and it immediately completes. And then I'm modifying its behavior with, a, with typeable operators. And so the first one is delay of one second, 1,000 milliseconds. And I also switch map to another observable. So the HTTP post request, which is part of the HTTP client, returns an observable. And so I want to actually switch um, from this observable to this new observable. And one of the advantages of switch map is that if this overall observable is unsubscribed from, uh, it will cancel this observable. So my in-flight post request will get canceled. The backend will still handle the post request and return it to the client, but the browser will ignore it. It won't uh, invoke this later code uh, since it will be canceled. And so in my post request, I'm hitting the back end at the root path, so just localhost 8080. And I'm passing in as the body a single key value pair, domain, and the value of the domain control. And so then based on my return from the server, if I get a truthy return value, then I know the domain exists. So I return a validation error. Otherwise, I return null. So that means that, there, that the domain doesn't exist and there's no validation error. I also have a catch error in case the uh, HTTP POST request failed, which means it wasn't able to reach the backend server. In that case, I return a different um, validation error. This is the node server error. And so these are detected in my uh, template, which we saw earlier uh, with these NGFs. It's checking to see if the control has these different kinds of errors. So the one we just saw was node server error. And so this mat error will show up only if uh, this error occurs. And so that is all for the TypeScript for the front end here. In fact, that's the entire application. Uh, I have just a little bit of supporting CSS just to make things look nice. Um, but this is a complete reactive form uh, that's using both synchronous and asynchronous validators. And we'll get into those in the later part of the series. Uh, but if you want to play around with it, the URL is public for both the stack blitz and the back end as well.